Hello and welcome to this tutorial on where I'm going to show you how to stream your 3DS at screen wirelessly without a physical modification to the device to your PC which will then allow you to record or stream it to a service. Okay, so there are a couple of things to keep in mind first. You will have to have um, a 3DS that has a custom firmware installed on it like Luma 3DS that way it will then allow you to run homebrew apps which is basically how this is able to run the other thing you'll need and this is recommended it's not mandatory is your computer is recommended to have that connected to ethernet as that will then have more a more stable connection you should get a bit of a higher frame rate out of it okay so first things first let's get the programs downloaded that you need. In the link in, in the description there will be links to Snickerstream and KitKat Slim. KitKat Slim is pretty good although it does require NTR viewer to run. Snickerstream however I've seemed to have better results using that. You can use either program although this tutorial will mainly focus on how to use Snickerstream and I'll be using that in this tutorial anyway. So now that you've got the software downloaded we need to prepare your 3DS. Now you'll get better results from the newer 3DS's like the new 3DS XL, the new 3DS and the new 2DS. Although it is possible with the old ones although you may not get a very good frame rate from them. Okay so my 3DS is modified already. It is physically modified with a capture card so I'm going to show you the screen using that, although I, I will use Snickerstream in a sec to show you how that works and comparison between the two. Now, first things first you need to do, we need to install the NTR boot selector. Uh, so open FBI. Go to title DB. Go down to B and there is NTR boot selector. Now as of this date I am up to date and there's the version information so you'll have that. Once you have that installed you can press B a couple times and return to the main screen. Now there is something else that you'll need. You'll need the to find out what IP your 3DS is and for most people this will change every now and again so there are two methods of doing this. You can either go to your routers page and have a look. For example, there's my 3DS there. Or you can go to FBI, go down to remote install, receive URLs over the network, and it will show you your current IP address. For example, mine is one. 192.168.125. Once you've done that, you can click select to exit FBI. And then, as I haven't installed it, it won't come up, but it will say a new package is uninstalled. You unwrap it, and it should be this NTR custom firmware or NTR CFW. Now, when you launch this for the first time, it'll ask you what settings you want to use. You click default and then click 3.6 and then from that point onwards it would then automatically load 3.6 for you for example mine just did now that that's loaded you can open Snickerstream put your IP address at the top most of the time you want to have the top screen as the priority as most games will use the top screen primarily unless you're using a bottom screen game well then you then you have want the bottom screen to be priority Set most of the settings to be similar to mine as I seem to get the better ones out of this. If you seem to if you want to fiddle around with it, you can see if you get better results. And then over here, most of the ones you want to leave alone, except for the horizontal the screen layout. Now I have it set to horizontal. You can have it set to vertical like this one. It's up to you the way you want it, but I have it set to horizontal as it seems to be better and easier to have a look around. Now, there's two things you need to do. 
if you're playing a normal game, for example, I'm going to, I'm going to use two games in this tutorial. If you're playing a game that is not a Pokemon title, at this point you can just click connect. And then, after a couple flashing colours, it will show up. So there's that bit. Now, this will work like normal. For example, I can launch the game and everything's fine. When the game loads. And as you can see, it loads, it works fine. And you'll be able to see the difference here. There is a couple limitations to it. For example, you can't get any sound out of here. Although I can get sound from my normal capture card. Although I think I've currently got it disabled. So that's fine. And it works perfectly fine. I'm getting a couple frame drops here and there. But it's good enough for someone who hasn't got the money to be able to do it. And it's perfectly fine on games like Pokemon and that where there's not much action going on. If there's more action going on, then maybe not to use the, the like this method and actually buy a modified 3DS. So that's all well and good. But if I was to try an, a different game, it took a while for it to see that I took the game out, like Pokemon here, you'll see a problem. Yeah, it gets stuck like this, and I believe, yeah, I have to force power off the 3DS now. Now, that can be eliminated by, uh, let's open, not that, let's open Snicker Stream again. Now, there's a, there's a, there is a fix for this. Although that also has a few limitations. So let me explain. One of the things you can do is when your 3DS loads up again, you'll open uh, NTR CFW like you did before. And everything's fine. But if you want to play a Pokemon game, you'll have to click this button. Send NFC patch. Now, I found that occasionally it doesn't do it. For example, Snickerstream has a few issues trying to do that. But if you have KitKat, KitKat Slim, you get the better streaming results with Snickerstream. But if you use KitKat, Stream, KitKat Slim just to send the patch, it should be fine. And then you click Connect. And when you launch the game again, it should proceed without an issue. But now it works fine. But there is a limitation to this. There you go. The limitation is you can't use any wireless functionality. I believe you can use local wireless, but you can't use normal functionality. For example, if I try to connect to the internet, it has an issue there. Now, this is because of something that Pokemon do, they have some sort of thing that interferes with the loading while having uh, NTR loaded or something like that. Now, you don't, if you don't mind doing it this way, then that's fine. But obviously, if you want to play Pokemon Online, then you'd have to get a physical capture card. Okay, so let's check this. Also, one of the things that you might want to do is every time you, you play a Pokemon game, you'll 
want to shut down your 3DS and or if every time you exit a Pokemon game with that patch you want to restart your 3DS as we found out that if you don't and you try and load another game it will get stuck like it did when loading Pokemon games without the patch so that's just something you keep to keep in mind so now that you've got NTR and you've got it all set up now we will configure it with OBS so if I actually get it connected here we are so we can put that there and put it in the background so the way I do it is I go game capture and I'll create, call this one tutorial top and this will be the top screen so I game cap the top screen and you select specific window from the mode and then make sure it's snicker stream or your other one kit cap and I always undo so I disable the anti-cheat compatibility hook because you don't need that for this one and you don't need to capture the cursor so there's that and then I add a window capture because you can't do two game captures for the same game and I do I'm going to call this tutorial bottom and this one is going to be snicker stream again and disable cursor catcher now we've got two things but we haven't we've, we've only got we've got them both twice but we don't want that we want them separate we want them to be top and bottom screens so for the top screen we're going to add a filter crop and pad and then we want to take the left I mean the, the right this is the top screen and we want to take 320 off the right which is basically the width of the bo bottom screen and then on the top, I mean on the bottom I mean, we want to also add a crop and pad and take 400 off the left. And then you can just increase the size. So we do it like this, there you go. We've got a nice and then lock it once you've done that so you can't move them and you've got a nice capture for something and you can fill these up with other things so that's how I do it although personally I do it with my capture card which would look a little bit better for some reason it's not loading properly at the moment but that's probably because I've got two OBS's running and that's probably not liking it that much. Now this looks like it might be conflicting. So that's how we do that. If there are any issues or any questions in the, um, please post them in the comments. Doing it with a proper capture card is a lot better. Although, if you can't shell out the 100 or so pounds to get your 3DS modified, it's understandable. But obviously there are limitations. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.